Hello everyone, my name is Claudio Moirej and I'm going to present our study entitled Characterization and Diagnosis of Social Housing in Viana do Castel, a Representative Analysis of Portugal's Social Housing. According to data from Mine and Pordata, approximately 59% of the Portuguese building stock was built between the 1961 and 2000. However, buildings constructed between the 60s and the 80s have the most relevance around 27.1%, due to their age and characteristics. These constructions, often clustered in degraded urban suburbs, present more anomalies and lower construction quality due to the lack of legislation and technical knowledge. Therefore, they are characterized by the high energy consumption, liquidating discomfort and seismic vulnerability. The renovation of buildings, in particular social housing, is crucial to adapt these constructions to the current needs and enhance residents' comfort. In this regard, the characterization and diagnosis of social housing is essential to understand the current state of buildings and address the residents' needs. This presentation focuses on the methodology used to analyze eight social housing buildings in Viana do Castel. The goal is to provide insights that can be extrapolated to a broader context of social housing across Portugal. Using all the information collected in contrast with on-site assessments such as resident interviews, drawings and photographs, it was possible to gather information about the constructive system, the function and uses of the buildings, and the quality of life of the residents. The study was divided into four main groups, context overview, perceptual characteristics, physical characteristics, and anomalies. Each group is associated with a scope of study that focuses on specific aspects of social housing, and a respective join that visually represents the results achieved through the analysis. The contextual overview focuses on the historical and urban context and the general aspects of social housing buildings. The study identifies the year of construction, number of floors, number of dwellings, the exact system, and the distribution. The outcome of the contextual overview is the location plan of social housing, which shows where the buildings are located in the urban context. The perceptual characteristics demonstrate the intangible characteristics of the buildings and evaluate the quality of interior spaces. This analysis is conducted empirically and results from on-site observation and registration. In addition to assessing aspects related to the building's envelope, such as thermal comfort, noise and solar incidents, it also evaluates its relationship with the building's interior, including the organization of interior spaces, the interior-exterior relationship, space uses and residents' experience. This group is directly related to the residents' quality of life and living conditions. The dwelling plan and ballet section illustrate the relationship between the envelope and interior spaces, as well as the spatial and habitability needs of the residents. The physical characteristics pertain to the tangible aspects of the construction, highlighting the materials and constructive system used in the buildings. This study identifies the composition of the construction elements such as walls, floors and roofs, the structural system, glazing and finishes. Furthermore, this analysis provides insights into how the buildings were constructed, the problems associated with the construction process, and the absence of materials or layers including thermal insulation. In this regard, the constructive details allow a better understanding of the building physics. After analyzing the type of construction and solutions used in social housing blocks, it becomes possible to understand the origin of existing problems, particularly concerning the building envelopes. In this context, identifying the anomalies of the facades is essential to understand the main issues in the constructions and subsequently to propose solutions that address these problems and improving living conditions. The identification of anomalies is carried out through on-site visual inspection and documented with the aid of photographs. With this information, it is possible to develop drawings of the main facades of social housing buildings, combining photomontage with drawings of the building's elevations. With this mythology, it is possible to have a comprehensive understanding of the current state of the buildings, as well as their characteristics and needs, both in terms of construction and residence. Using the Mapping Public Housing Database, it was possible to identify the social housing buildings in Portugal built between 1910 and 1974. Based on this map, it is possible to verify that there is a higher concentration of public housing in the metropolitan areas of Lisbon and Port. This is due to the higher population density and the high degree of urbanization in these regions. Furthermore, geographically, there is a tendency for a greater number of social housing complexes along the coast, especially in the northern and central coastal areas. 
This phenomenon is related to the country's population distribution, which is denser in these areas due to the historical and economic advantages associated with proximity to the sea. On the other hand, the interior of the country has fewer social housing buildings, probably due to the lower population density and less urbanization in these areas. With fewer people concentrated in these regions, there is less pressure of the housing market and consequently less need for public housing construction. In southern Portugal, particularly in the Alentejo and Algarve regions, there is a moderate distribution of social housing buildings. In the Algarve, there is a slight concentration of urban and tourist areas, in the Alentejo, despite the large territorial extension, the lower population density is reflecting fewer public housing offerings. In many rural and less densely populated areas, especially in central and northeastern Portugal, there is little public housing supply. This absence of social housing can be explained by the lower population density and the more dispersed distribution of communities, resulting in a lower concentration of people in need of social housing contrary to what occurs in urban areas. These observations from the map reflect the socioeconomic distribution and the urbanization of Portugal, with public housing policies more focused on areas of higher population density. The concentration of social housing in metropolitan areas and along the coast highlights where the need for affordable housing is most critical, while the lesser presence in the interior and rural areas indicates different demographic and economic dynamics. The research focuses on the north of Portugal in Viana do Castel. This study focuses on the analysis of these eight social housing buildings, aiming to understand their characteristics and common features. However, in this presentation, I will only show the application of the mythology in the Tris Julio social housing. Located in Ereidark, the Tris Julio social housing was constructed in 1998 and consists of two four-story blocks with a regular floor plan. Attached to block 2, there is a triangular-shaped volume with only one floor which corresponds to the social support equipment of the Portuguese Association of Parents and Friends of Mentally Deficient Citizens. Since the construction of the buildings, the Municipal Council of Viana do Castelo has promoted maintenance and renovation actions for the housing complex. However, residents have never allowed such interventions. These reactions result from the residents' mistrust of the people intervening in the neighborhood as they feel that their privacy is compromised. This context of distrust may be associated with the discrimination that these social groups generally suffer. The complex includes 42 dwellings with access through three staircases. Despite the four floors, there are no elevators impacting accessibility. Regardless of housing typology, each dwelling is composed of a kitchen with a pantry and an access to laundry treatment area, living room, bedrooms, and bathroom. All the dwellings, both T2 and T3 typologies, have only one bathroom. Throughout the building envelope, there are no exterior spaces allocated to the dwellings. In other words, the residents like any form of balcony, whether for social areas or bedrooms. Furthermore, the roof is inaccessible, which removes the potential for creating common areas. Despite the buildings being slightly elevated, ground floor dwellings face privacy issues due to their proximity to the public space with windows providing direct view to the outside. In the building envelope, thermal insulation has been introduced, such as 5 cm of mineral wool blanket in the roof and 3 cm of expanded polystyrene inside the double wall cavity. However, the applied thermal insulation is clearly insufficient and there are areas where the insulation is interrupted, creating thermal bridges and therefore contributing to thermal discomfort of the residents. The Trios de Julio social housing is located in a low traffic residential area with no major noise sources. However, the use of single pane glass does not contribute to the acoustic comfort and allows for significant energy losses. On the east facing facade, external solar shading with plastic roller blinds has been applied to control the entry of light into the social areas and bathrooms. However, there is no shading system on the west facing facade. The buildings have reinforced concrete structure consisting of columns and beams and lightweight floor slabs. The exterior walls are made of double brick masonry with an air gap and 3 cm of expanded polystyrene. On the exterior, these walls are covered with waterproofing plaster with the exception of the basement area which is covered with ceramic strips. The interior walls are made with simple brick masonry, plastered and painted with plastic paint on both sides with the exception of the kitchens and bathrooms, which are covered with ceramic tiles. 
The roof is composed of fiber cement sheets applied over concrete beams supported by brick walls and it also has 5 cm of thermal insulation. The exterior frames are made with aluminum profiles and 5 mm glass. All exterior spans of the dwellings are protected by plastic rubber blinds. In the laundry areas, it was applied an oriental glass to guarantee permanent ventilation. These drawings allow us to identify the areas with the most problems and provide an overview of the current state of the building. Since the Tris Julio Social Housing is located near the Lima River and on very sandy soil, there are currently serious problems with the foundations of the buildings and consequently problems related to their structural stability. The ground floor of the social equipment is sinking due to the poor stability of the soil, resulting in a lowering of about 5 cm in relation to the housing block 2. Even though the housing complex was relatively recently built in 1998, with traditional construction techniques that are widely used today, its poor state of conservation is evident. In conversation with some workers on the social equipment, it was possible to understand that many of the problems of third and lack of maintenance result from the lack of hygiene and cleanliness of the building by the residents. After visiting the building, it is evident the constant accumulation of garbage and dirt throughout the building, which can cause health problems for people. In addition, mold moss and green stains are present throughout the building, as well as the oxidation of ventilation grills and exposed iron reinforcement due to the inadequacy of the thickness of the protective layer. To be noted that throughout the entire building, it is possible to see large areas where the exterior tall cladding has detached from the wall. To summarize this study, here are the analyzed social housing buildings, so it is possible to compare their characteristics and problems allowing for a comprehensive view of the research. The construction years range from 1968 to 2004, with the oldest being the SM housing complex and the most recent being the municipal organization of Lugar de Malhão. Additionally, the most common building height is around 4 floors, with one building in the San Vicente housing complex reaching 11 floors. However, only the latter has an elevator. The number of dwellings varies according to the number of floors and housing blocks, from 16 dwellings in the Fisherman's Block to 2,090 dwellings in the Brazier Housing Complex. In terms of building axis, the most common is central axis, with distribution to two dwellings, left and right. The analysis of perceptual characteristics reveal that a significant portion of the case studies are in a state of insalubrity, insecurity and living discomfort. Among the buildings analyzed, those located outside the world centers have residential use on their ground floors, while buildings located in urban context have ground floors that vary between residential, garage, and commercial areas. Especially, there are evident issues of lack of space and rigid compartmentalization across all buildings, both in social and private areas, and the absence of private balconies and common outdoor spaces. A common aspect in all analyzed buildings is that the roof is inaccessible, not taking advantage of its potential for creating common space for residents. In bedrooms, the areas are relatively small, with the SCM housing complex and fisherman's block not meeting the minimum volumes established in regulations. Additionally, these areas do not allow for the placement of work zones, whether for studying or teleworking. In social areas, since it is very common to use the dining room and living room in the same place, these areas are often insufficient. In many cases, there is no distinction between these spaces due to their reduced size. The housing complexes where this problem is most evident are the SEM housing complex and Fisherman's Block, where the construction years are older. Furthermore, most social housing buildings lack balconies. However, those that do have only exterior spaces in the social areas. Additionally, residents often convert balconies into enclosed space to mitigate the lack of space increasing the interior area of the dwellings. Generally, in terms of interior organization, social areas face south or east, and private areas face north or west, varying according to the building's location and the context in which are, they are situated. Furthermore, serviced areas such as bathrooms, kitchens, and storage are located at the center of the homes, separating private areas from the social areas. When buildings have housing on the ground floor, Privacy issues are very common due to their proximity to the street. The buildings have low performing windows with single glazing, resulting in low thermal and acoustic efficiency. 
Consequently, exposure to noise from buildings surrounded by infrastructure, such as roads and railway lines, and the lack of shading elements on south-facing facades, such as overhangs and bridge soleils, cause discomfort and overeating issues in the summer. The analysis of physical characteristics highlight that the most commonly used structure type in the construction of social housing is the reinforced concrete columns and beams, with the exception of dark social housing, which utilizes solid reinforced concrete slabs and walls. Regarding exterior walls, the SCM housing complex and the Fisherman's Block, dated 1968 and 1971, respectively, have walls composed of resistant brick masonry. In contrast, the other relatively newer housing complexes are mostly composed of double brick masonry walls. In all the analyzed social housing, thermal insulation was either insufficient or non existent, contributed to thermal discomfort and the formation of thermal bridges resulting in surface condensation and the proliferation of fungi and mold. In this context, the older buildings exhibit significantly inferior construction quality, living conditions and comfort levels. However, in the relatively newer buildings, although some have thermal insulation, it is clearly insufficient to meet current comfort demands. The roof of the buildings varies in form and slope, but the materials and construction principles are common across several social housing buildings with fiber cement sheets and ceramic tiles supported by a wooden substructure being prominent. In terms of glazing, the wings are mostly composed of aluminum frames and single glazing, with thickness ranging from 3.5 mm to 5 mm. Regarding interior finishes, it is common to use parquet, cork and ceramic mosaic for flooring and plaster and ceramic tiles for walls and ceilings. For exterior walls, in all social complexes, the facades are covered with plaster, with the three jury social housing and brazier housing complexes, also covered with ceramic cladding on the facades. Across all the social housing, a common issue is the strong presence of humidity, typically located at the transitions between the roof and the facades, in exterior walls in contact with the ground, and in the opening areas. The lack of adequate insulation and the detachment of coating contribute to water penetration, promoting the appearance of the illogical colonies, mold and moss. Additionally, cracks caused by structural movements, thermal variations and the inadequacy quality of materials used in the construction facilitate water infiltration into the building elements. These conditions negatively affect the integrity of the buildings and the health of the residents. Moreover, due to the insufficient thickness of the protective layer in reinforced concrete, the steel reinforcements become exposed to moisture and corrosive agents, potentially compromising the structural safety of the buildings. Metallic elements such as ventilation grills, balconies and support structures show signs of oxidation due to the exposure to the marine environment and lack of adequate protection against corrosion. The oxidation compromises the safety and durability of these elements, requiring repair or replacement interventions. All the anomalies identified in the buildings are exacerbated both by proximity to the sea and by lack of maintenance, caused deterioration of the constructions. The analysis of social housing, in addition to highlighting the high energy consumption, housing discomfort and structural vulnerability of these buildings, also demonstrated that the existing housing model is based on a static and rigid compartmentalization, but not accommodating new spatial and programmatic needs. Furthermore, it was found that the older the construction year of the social housing, the lower the construction requirements and legislative restrictions, resulting in greater problems both in terms of spatial and interior organization, as well as in construction and comfort. The results obtained from the analysis of social housing in Vianna Castel offer a representative view of current state of the housing stock in Portugal. As a large part of the Portuguese housing stock was built in similar periods with equivalent methods and materials, it is possible to conclude that the characteristics and problems found in Viana de Castel are largely representative of other regions of the country. The methodology applied made it possible to identify common characteristics and recurring problems in buildings, just as lack of maintenance, living discomfort, and inadequacy of spaces to the current needs of residents. This methodology proved to be effective in understanding the current state of buildings and identifying the main areas that require intervention. This approach can be replicated in other regions to assess the local housing stock and develop solutions that adapt to the specific needs of each area. The systemization of analysis with the creation of plan, section, construction details and elevations provides a solid basis for the development of renovation projects aimed at improving habitability conditions, energy efficiency and durability of buildings. 
In conclusion, the analysis of social housing in Viana de Castelo not only confirms the urgent need for interventions in the aged housing stock in Portugal, but also offers a methodological model that other regions can adopt. The application of this methodology for the renovation of buildings has the potential to significantly transform the Portuguese housing outlook, promoting safer and more comfortable construction suited to the needs of its inhabitants. Thank you for your attention.